Hello everyone, this is Scott, and today I wanted to show you a little overview of what I'm working on by filling in uh, the heads of pulled rivets with uh, super fill epoxy. The last couple of days I've been working on filling the rivets for the horizontal stabilizer. Um, I did the, I filled the rivets on the rudder and there's not that many rivets that need to be filled. It's, uh, I, I didn't really get into a good process with that, um, but I've sort of refined things now that I've, I'm working on the horizontal stabilizer and wanted to spend a little more time coming up with a solution. So, but I wanted to back up and kind of talk about what I'm doing. Um, some of the tools that you see here in front, I've, I've got a scale. I'm using super fill. This is part A and part B. The white is part B. And uh, basically uh, it's two to one. So you do two parts of this to one part of this. The second, I'm using, um, I'm using just some disposable party plates. And you, uh, you sort of zero out your scale with the plate on there and you just, you just grab a dab of the A. Um, for this syringe, I can fill the syringe halfway with nine grams. So put six, six grams of A, three grams of B, stir it up really good, put it in a syringe, and that's gonna be about more than you can use before it gets solid. So don't, don't overmake um, a big batch. About 20 minutes is really the work time where you can ever squeeze it out of here. After that, it starts getting firm and it, and it makes it harder to push into the rivet without literally just pushing it in with your finger, which then makes an enormous mess because I have firsthand experience with that now. It's kind of hard to tell, but uh, this is the mixed up. I'm just mixing it with, uh, these are some stir sticks that I cut into pieces. They're just bamboo stir sticks that I got on Amazon. Uh, but it's pretty thick. Um, I've seen some people online um, thin it with denatured alcohol, but the company actually recommends against that. So I'm not sure if it actually causes a problem or they're overly cautious, but I'm not doing that just to kind of follow manufacturer recommendations. Uh, it does make it harder to work with for sure because it's thicker. So I'm, I'm done with the... Uh the horizontal stabilizer filling all the rivets and I just wanted to do a few closing thoughts on as I evolved my process from uh, uh, one one technique to another um, I started sort of with a technique that the factory puts in the instructions where I sort of got a piece of aluminum and I cut a hole in it I had a couple different size holes um, I actually trimmed this one up so it fit between the rivets a little better um, and just sort of dabbing it in with, um, with a, a, a stir stick and just kind of working it in and then just sort of wiping it off. Um, I felt like that made a lot of mess. Um, I felt like I had a lot of cleanup to do and it ended up getting, uh, some of the super fill around the outside of the rivets as I tried to clean it up. So, um, I gave up on that. I cleaned it up and I think I over cleaned it because what, what ended up happening is uh, uh, I ended up when I'm wiping off the top um, of the rivet, my um, paper towel or cloth would sort of scoop out just a little bit of the super fill so that it was not flush with the surface. So I didn't like that. Um, so um, one idea is maybe to use this technique, but be a little neater. Um, and then uh, maybe scrape it with uh, a straight razor or I tried this. This is a craft scraper that my wife had. Um, I, I, this, I felt like the straight razor worked a little better just to just kind of get the excess off. And then once it dries, then to sort of just polish it clean. And um, because of the difference between the flush rivets and the... Uh, and the normal roundhead rivets, um, the the roundhead rivets, because they, they're up above the surface, you have a lot of options for sort of sanding them down smooth. Um, I, I, I like this, uh, this is a sanding disc. It's 240, it's not very aggressive. The problem is you have to be very vertical because if you tilt it any, you'll end up scraping the, the, the aluminum, 
which again, it's 240. It's, it's probably going to be part of normal paint prep anyway to put a little bit of a scratch on it. Um, but, uh, but this worked really well. The, uh, I tried a couple of the other gadgets that are in my, uh, my little kit that I bought it. This was a Harbor Freight. Um, this is 80 grit and it's sort of like a sanding disc. So it's like sandpaper um, wrapped around a, a shaft and it works okay. It's not perfect. And, and then I have a smaller one that I tried. Again, it does okay. Um, the sanding disc does a really good job. Um, the best are these little polishing things, but the problem is they wear out really quick and I don't think you can see that, but the end of it wore off and then you can see the metal shaft. Well, obviously I don't wanna be pushing a metal shaft into my rivets. Um, just, I don't wanna to be too aggressive and actually take any of the rivet material away. I just wanna get rid of the epoxy. Um, and, and some of this is just me being overly particular, but um, I definitely want the rivets to look uh, uniform. I went back and I had taken a lot of pictures at Sun and Fun the last couple of years of slings. And uh, you do notice in the paint, if you really look, which I did, um, where the rivets weren't filled in completely or where they were, they, there was a, a divot um, where it was wiped off probably, as I experienced, where you, uh, you wiped it off too much and uh, it, it, it sort of creates a little uh, cup shape in the, in the rivet. It's filled, but it's still got a little space to attract dirt and water and that sort of thing. I'll see if I can find one of those pictures. I'll, I'll throw it up in a corner. But uh, anyway, uh, this is a, it's kind of an evolving process. It took a lot longer than it should have for what this is uh, for me. Uh, but partly I just wanted to sort of uh, solidify a technique that I could use uh, for the wings and the rest of the fuselage because I just I wanted to get a process that I liked, the tools that I liked, make sure I have what I need, and uh, so it'll go quicker on the wings. Uh, so I had some time. I'm still missing some parts. So uh, I'm sort of... Uh, between work and some other projects, I'm kind of, I was able to take a little more time with this without feeling like I'm getting behind schedule. So anyway, uh, hopefully that was uh, useful to you. Uh, I, I just wanted to show you the, uh, the tool, uh, the Dremel tool that I'm using. Um, my audio was bad on this clip, so I'll just uh, go over it. But uh, basically I, I've got this sort of the, the granddaddy of the Dremel kits. Uh, I bought this as part of a, a number of tools I got from another builder. Um, so uh, this was probably more than I would have just bought if I was just shopping for tools, but it's pretty nice. Um, it, it comes with all these extra uh, accessories, sanding discs, sanding drums. Uh, it's got this uh, hand wand that's about a two foot extension and uh, it allows you to sort of hold it like a pencil, uh, which is really nice. Um, it gives you a lot of control and it was really useful for, uh, for what I was doing. Uh, I'm showing you the, the rubber polishing tips uh, that I, I pointed out earlier. I think those work the best for the uh, flush rivets as long as you don't have too much material because they do wear out pretty quickly. Um, so that's what I'm talking about here. But uh, I'm going to put links to the Dremel and uh, the epoxy and some of the other stuff that I mentioned in this video in the description. So uh, uh, the kit that I have is from Harbor Freight with all the different tips, uh, including these that I'm showing, the, uh, the little rubber polishing tips. Uh, but you can get the same kit on Amazon. I saw it as well. I just happen to already have the one from Harbor Freight. So uh, I'm gonna throw some video up showing uh, me just polishing off some of the rivet heads. And I think that'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching.